Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Great to see you all today. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2 with John Coleman, my wonderful partner, and John Mariani, the virtual gourmet who just knows everything that you would want to put in your mouth. If you want to put hey, it in your mouth, he'll know about it. Well, I haven't met all of them, but no. Good to see you again, John. You too. Um, now, I'm a, a big fan of your uh, newsletter, your weekly newsletter, your free weekly newsletter, The Virtual Gourmet. I, I like that's found on johnmariani.com, that newsletter? <laughs> that's the one. That's the oh. one. Um, and not too long ago, you reviewed um, Chaz. I think it, I think the restaurant's called Chaz. It's owned by Chaz Parmentieri, the actor, playwright, uh, man of all talents. Um, and I think, if I recall the article correctly, John, you wrote because he opened up a second restaurant in White Plains, New York, uh, after what the one in Manhattan, which is the original one. And as you explained, um, he's uh, he's a partner in it. He's, he's, they didn't just buy his name. He's a partner in it. But it, it struck me, what struck me about the article is that he's not, by, by any means, the first celebrity to lend his name to a, a restaurant. I, one of the things I think of is Don Shula's restaurant. I, I think it was in Florida, uh, Steakhouse, whatever. But, but you pointed out that Chaz really does, not only frequent it, he really does seem to have a... Uh, and a great, uh, an emotional investment of, of cuisine in the cuisine as well as the uh, the, the business. <clears throat> yeah, the Chaz, it's called Chaz Pomentary Restaurant White Plains, and uh, the one in Manhattan is in the theater district. But you're right, uh, a lot of uh, celebrities in the past, going way back to Fatty Arbuckle and um, and Joe Lewis and, and so many others, uh, Tut Shores, uh, celebrities have always had their names at restaurants, Britney Spears, but they had nothing to do with it. They are just paid to put their name on it in the hopes that they will drop by once in a blue moon and bring celebrities, um, which they can. And most of them, almost all of them flame out within a year because the the, the uh, interest is gone after a while. Uh, Chaz is a partner with um, the Sinanaj brothers. Uh, Sinanaj brothers are representative of a whole slew of Middle Eastern, former Yugoslavian republics, Serbia, Croatia, Montenegro, Albania, um, of people who came over to America, usually by way of Italy, where they learned the trade, starting as dishwasher and uh, becoming a, a cook, and uh, and uh, then coming to America and doing the same thing, and rise to open their own restaurants, largely Italian, uh, very often Italian steakhouses throughout Manhattan. And I mean, there are probably a dozen I could name off the top of my head. And they do a bang up job. They're very committed, extremely hospitable. None of that nonsensical macho that you find at Smith and Walensky and, and Gallagher's sort of thing. Um, they uh, buy the best ingredients. So they wanted to um, get to, together with Chaz Palminteri, um, who had expressed interest in opening a restaurant. He thought that would be cool to open a restaurant. Um, he did open a restaurant or help lend his name to a place in Baltimore that didn't last more than a year for the simple reason that in Baltimore, they don't want anything above the veal parm chicken parm and, <laughs> and it was a little bit more sophisticated food and more expensive well in new york he first opened on the east side over near grand central terminal then on the west side and then COVID hit and he was closed for a while but it reopened there and now they've opened up in white plains which is in westchester county fortunately only 15 minutes from where i live and um it is an italian uh of american steakhouse which means you have terrific pastas and excellent antipasti as long uh, as well as maryland crab cakes terrific um ribeyes and skirt steaks and, and uh, ribs and colorado lamb chops uh, which you get like six on a plate um the prices are they're steakhouse prices so the things are not cheap but you're getting very very high quality 
and it's a really great looking space and uh, I've been to it a couple of times uh, to review it and I know Chaz from uh, I won't say a way back I've known Chaz for about 10 years and I should probably explain for not everybody Chaz Palminteri Chaz Palminteri well, I, I know that name if you know it all, it would be from a slew of movies that he has done, going back to the usual suspects. He was yeah. in that. Sure. He was. Uh, he he wrote and starred in as a one man play, in um, uh, based on his growing up in the Bronx in the Arthur Avenue section, which was called a Bronx Tale, and he performed that for years and years, and Hollywood wanted to buy it, and he says, well. You can buy it if you um, have me star in it He's, as the gangster. In the, in the one act show, he played every single part. He played the son, he played the father, he played the gangster, and so forth. Um, and they offered him a tremendous amount of money. I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And they said, no, we've got to get a name actor. And he refused. Now, this is at a point in his life when he probably doesn't have $500 in the bank. But his, his acting career was picking up. And he held out, and they offered him 500 grand. He said no. So along comes a fairy godmother and godfather and the person of Robert De Niro, um, with whom he'd been in, the, in a couple of pictures. And um, they knew each other, and Robert De Niro happens to love the Arthur Avenue section of the Bronx, and he himself has filmed uh, some uh, scenes up there. And he says... I'll go in on it, and I'll demand that you play Sonny, the gangster, and I'll play the father. Well, clicked. Then it clicked. So he got all this great money. He wrote the script. And A Bronx Tale started out as kind of a very small movie with a lot of adherence, but over the years has become, become much, much more than a cult movie because it eventually went on Broadway also, which is directed by Robert De Niro. So he made that, and then he made also, I'm sure everybody knows, the, the um, I said the usual suspects, um, uh, Analyze This. Remember that? That one with Robert yes. De Niro. very, very and funny. Yeah. Only surprise type of uh, mafioso who has a shrink, um, uh, Billy Crystal. Very funny movie. And Sonny is, uh, or rather, Sonny, rather, um, uh, Chaz Palminteri is, uh, plays an antagonist of another mobster. Um, wonderful movie. Uh, there was a, there's another interesting story about holding out. Um, they had written into the script of Analyze This that Billy Crystal's wedding at the end would have uh, the De Niro character hires Tony Bennett to sing at his wedding. What a big deal that is, right? And so they contacted uh, Tony Bennett's manager, who happened to be Tony Bennett's son. And at the time, Tony Bennett was not as big as he once had been. Um, and uh, he was appearing, and his son was really managing his career. And he says, okay, I want uh, $250,000 for him to appear. And they said, it's, it, he's going to be sell, singing half a song. He'll be on screen for 35 seconds. And, they, and he says, no, I want $250,000. So that's much too much money. He says, I happen to know that it's already written into the script. So who are you going to go get? Paul Anka? <laughs> Somebody to sing? <laughs> and they took the $250,000. So back to so back to Chaz. So Chaz has had a very successful career. He's made a fortune doing voiceovers. He's done in commercials. He's done um, um, animated uh, voiceovers, um, and uh, he continues to work. My favorite movie of his, by the way, is one that nobody saw. The independent movie called Yonkers Joe. And Yonkers Joe is about he's a card shark, card shark, and or as they say, a card shark. He's a card shark in Yonkers, and uh, he has an autistic son whom he at the beginning of the movie does not have much to do with nor want to have much to do with um it turns out to be a very beautiful love story uh highly recommend you can see it on youtube uh, yonkers yonkers joe so that's the story of, of Chaz, and um he's a big deal down on author avenue of the bronx um by the way they would not they could not film uh bronx tale on Arthur Avenue, because the local merchants would have to close down for days and days and days um, their businesses. Um, and uh, it's, it's one thing to close down a restaurant for a day, um, but it's another thing to close down a whole street of, of vendors and, and restaurateurs and vegetable guys and fish guys and so forth. He said, as a matter of fact, there's one scene in a very famous scene in which some bikers come in and uh, to a bar down there and are very, very rude to everybody, including the bartender. And Chaz orders <clears throat> his boys to come in with baseball bats and bust it up. It's a very vicious scene. They bust up the, the, the bikes and everything. 
and it's a very closed, closed space in this little bar. I said, how long did that take to film that two-minute segment? He says, three days. That's that's the movie, three days to do one yeah. scene like that. Um, he also, he, he, in the end, uh, his character is dead in a coffin at a, at a funeral home. And I said, uh, how long do you have to lie down and play dead? He says, ten hours. Oh, my Lord. Ten hours. <laughs> so anyway yeah back to the restaurant it, it's what i highly recommend both the one in the theater district uh, off broadway there not off broadway in the broadway area it's exactly the same menu great wineless by the way very very good mostly italian wineless very reasonably priced too um so you're going to pay a pretty penny i mean the steaks probably go 50 55 bucks and the pasta is somewhere in the 20s portions are enormous so if you order a pasta you split it with your your friend or your wife or whatever you're going to take some of that steak home unless you can put away 24 ounces of beef at one sitting you know so that's i think that always has to be factor in um the prices of any restaurant these days is if you're going to be taking home some for lunch tomorrow well you've already just paid for your lunch um and does Chaz ever come there? Yeah. Well, first of all, he lives in Bedford, um, in Westchester. Bedford is 15-minute drive from the restaurant. So he's very often there a couple of times a week and maybe a couple of times a week um, down in, uh, in Manhattan, too. Um, he plays Vegas. He still does his uh, one-man show um, of a Bronx Dale uh, of various parts of the country. But, yeah, he's very committed to making this place work. And I've been there when he was there. And I, I dined with him, and you know, people are in awe seeing him because he's such a distinctive face. And they timidly, timidly, not like out there in Hollywood, John. How can I even want to get? They go over, you know, <laughs> dining at Spock. Can I have you want to get? No, people are very nice about that, and they'll kind of stand there, off in the, <laughs> the wings, so to speak. And he knows, and he gets up to greet them, and can pose with him and he's fine of course puts his arms around everybody um he's a very good guy he's a uh, um he's soft-spoken he's not a tough guy um he really watches his weight and <laughs> hates to eat too much or drink too much even though he has his own brand of vodka um which i forget the name of but uh, it's pretty good vodka made in italy of all places um so uh it's a place to be recommended i recommend all of his movies not least as i said yonkers joe and he's a great representative of Italian Americans. Um, I've asked him about, well, you play so many gangster roles, you have to do that. He says, well, you know, they have to eat, and if they're good roles, um, good good characters to develop, you know, why not? John Wayne played a lot of cowboys, uh, so that's a good answer. Good right. answer. Yeah, fa fascinating. Uh, just one of the many uh, fascinating people that uh, uh, not only are you aware of and uh, in, in uh, the food industry where you've been to their restaurants, but uh, somebody who you actually know and uh, obviously are fond of uh, and admire, uh, his his journey, which is unlike anybody else's. Very much so. Great. Uh, great story, John. Thanks. Thanks. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.